Evo ja ću još jednom sve vas pozdraviti ovdje u hotelu Kornaro, ovdje u Splitu i naravno sve one koji su putem Zoom aplikacije online s nama na završnoj konferenciji Fersi projekta. A sada nastavljamo sa daljim prezentacijama. S nama je ovdje doktorica znanosti Danijela Mioković iz Ministarstva poljoprivrede Republike Hrvatske. Vidjet ćemo kako to sve izgleda na terenu i kako se uopće sve radi i s ribarima, ali i sa ustanovama na nivou Hrvatske. Izvolite, gospođice Danijela. Hello, everybody. Uh, so um, I am empl employed by the Ministry of uh, Agriculture in Croatia. I am uh, one of the project partners uh, on uh, our project Fair C. And I'm here to present uh, the results of our pilot studies uh, that were done in Istria, Veneto and Marke regions. And I will present uh, the results that were made by other uh, colleagues and project partners uh, working for the Vegal and Assam, and also the, res uh, the results uh, that were uh, made by uh, COISPA. Uh, so I will do my best to present uh, the work of all the others because we have uh, only 15 minutes to, <laughs> to do this. And I will try to really to be short and, uh, and uh, in a simple way to explain what uh, we did. So uh, this activity is 5.2 within the work package 5. Um, this work package is dedicated uh, to the, the development of a, particip a participatory process uh, for the definition of uh, management scenarios. Uh, so we use these pilot actions Uh, to try to simulate uh, local management activities and test them with our uh, integrated decision support tool that is the models that were explained today. Okay, sorry. Um, so, um, like I said, uh, we included three sub-areas of the Adriatic. Uh, one was Eastern Veneto region, The other was Marka region, and the third one was in Croatia in Istria County. And um, in these case studies, we try to show the, the potential direct and indirect effects at the local and uh, wider spatial scale uh, that can be induced by the implementation of our uh, management plans that we that are not real management plans, but there are scenarios that we suggested uh, to test. Uh, so uh, the main output of this work package would be uh, not only to share knowledge and benefits and challenges on this uh, ecosystem approach to fisheries, but also to try to use this participatory approach and to explore uh, So which are the most uh, suitable pathways to achieve these sustainability objectives? Uh, and so uh, we try to um, bring our stakeholders to, to share with us uh, their, um, their thoughts and comments on, on the work that we are doing. Uh, so how we do it? Uh, we first uh, had done some identification and categorization of stakeholders. And then we uh, brought them to uh, consultations at local level to define uh, and uh, identify the test scenarios. And also uh, after we did that, we invited them again to share with them the results of uh, our simulations and to comment on the results. So the first uh, of the pilot action regions was Eastern Veneto. Uh, the pilot actions there were about uh, identification and conflicts and possible solutions between different uh, segments of fisheries. Uh, so this pilot action was implemented by our uh, project partner, Vegal. Uh, and like I said, it was about the identif identification of conflicts, uh, inter and intrasectoral, and possible solutions uh, for sustainable development of fisheries. So uh, how they did th this is they uh, used the data collected in the Venetian maritime compartment specifically. Uh, so they collected in industrial uh, fishery landings time series, but most importantly, they uh, collected small scale fishery landings 
recreational fishing landings, and also clam dredging time series. Uh, they also uh, gave some information on the main spatial management measures and uh, of uh, active and proposed resources management plans. So the data that was collected, like I said, included industrial and artisanal fishery landings. Then also uh, landings from the clam dredging. Uh, data was all, also collected from the recreational fishing, especially here is the official data available for uh, bluefin tuna, that is the predator species. Uh, then also uh, for other target species, data was collected through a questionnaire that was distributed uh, uh, through social media groups. And then from this, CPUE was uh, calculated and uh, uh, landing trends for the main target species was also calculated for the last 20 years. Uh, the interesting uh, result that came from this is that uh, the results show that uh, particularly for some species, recreational uh, landings largely exceed those of commercial fisheries even when using very conservative uh, estimates. So this is the conflict that I was uh, saying that uh, was asked to be resolved, the conflict between recreational and commercial fishing, fisheries and what is their um, impact uh, one from one to another. And uh, the results, the, our pre pre preliminary results uh, show that uh, uh, since we noticed that there was a trend of increasing recreational fisheries, um, we tried to calculate uh, using the tool uh, what would happen if recreational fisheries increased five more, five more times in the next 10 years and how that would affect uh, professional fleets. And so first obser observation that were made showed that uh, recreational fisheries impact is not negligible and that it is really important to improve data ga gathering on this uh, segment of fisheries. Uh, this is important for all of the Adriatic Sea. And also, uh, this clearly shows that this tool could provide hints on the possible link between the small scale fisheries decline and recreational fisheries increased trend that is uh, going on right now. Uh, then uh, this, the second pilot action, uh, that we tried was in uh, Marke region. So uh, this activity was carried out uh, by ASAM, our uh, project partner, and in cooperation with OGS and Begal. Uh, so like I said, we first uh, tried to uh, identify stakeholders and then uh, present to them uh, our project and the ecosystem approach to fisheries, and also then to uh, identify uh, scenarios uh, that are uh, of interest to the uh, sector. So um, after we uh, identified first list of uh, scenarios that uh, can be tested uh, using the uh, bioeco model, um, then uh, we shared the results also at the stakeholder meetings and technical events. And uh, we showed uh, our stakeholders what are the uh, functionalities of this uh, integrated platform. So uh, again, to explain a little bit about this pilot action, the target species chosen was uh, common sole that is uh, targeted by the Rapido troll feed fleet. Uh, so uh, the common sole is a species that was chosen because it is one of the most important commercial species, very uh, valued by the consumers. And it also has nursery uh, areas uh, located along the coastal zone of Marke region. Uh, and so this species is targeted not only by rapid troll, but also by set nets from spring to fall. Uh, the tools that were used to test the scenarios is uh, uh, a bioeconomic model bioeco that is developed by COISPA. And uh, this was used to evaluate uh, the impacts of potential management actions at the local scale. 
in the short and medium ter terms and considering uh, spatial and temporal uh, closures. Uh, so the scenarios that were chosen, there were two uh, scenarios. Uh, one was uh, closure of the six uh, nautical miles from the shore, and the other was to close nine nautical miles from the shore for two or four months. Uh, and these periods would follow the Italian summer fishing ban in Rapido Troll Fleet. Uh, so the benefits from this testing would be, bet, uh, would be a better understanding of uh, uh, ecological approach to fisheries framework, uh, then also increased competencies for the stakeholders, increased participation in planning and co-management, and better understanding, of course, of this decision support tool. Uh, uh, um, I will now uh, say something about these third pilot actions because, as you will see in the end, uh, we have we have uh, combined these two pilot actions in one uh, one uh, results because also in Istria County we also choose uh, chose to test um, our tar target species common sole. Uh, so how we decided uh, on the scenarios for Istria County, we uh, had a stakeholder meeting and we interviewed our stakeholders about ideas and suggestions uh, regarding local management actions. And then we further, further, of course, discussed it with our project partners. Um, so uh, the management action that was chosen for pilot action testing uh, was a proposal for the increase in mesh size of thermal nets uh, for catching common sole, and uh, also the resulting effects that would have on stock and on marketing price, as well as economic consequences for fishermen. And uh, the interesting thing is that the testing of these nets have already started through another uh, project uh, called Ariel, uh, and this was accepted as an innovation idea, so we already had some selectivity data gathered by scientists from Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries in Split. Uh, just to explain a little bit, uh, tremel nets for catching so common sole, they are made from three layers of, la of netting. Uh, so the minimum, minimum uh, mesh size for the inner net is 40 millimeters and the proposal was to uh, increase the mesh size to 42 millimeters and to see uh, how it will affect the stock and the fishing uh, efficiency. Um, so, like I said, the data was already collected by the Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries, and it was collected during 2018 and 2019 uh, in the area uh, of the northern Adriatic around uh, Savudria and Umag. And uh, the results were made by uh, the BioEco tool. Uh, so the person that will answer your questions about these results will be Maria Teresa, because uh, she is best uh, uh, the best person to, that you can ask about this. So uh, what was done, like I said, since the, the same species was uh, chosen as target species, we took uh, inputs from uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries, and also inputs from Assam and uh, and uh, the girl that is from uh, Beam Trawlers in Maka region. And uh, what uh, have we done? We uh, made these four management scenarios plus uh, the status quo, and we try to test test all these um, scenarios to see the differences and uh, uh, the effects of these uh, scenarios. So scenario uh, number one in Istria was to increase the mesh size only in Istria that is in the northernmost part of the Adriatic on the Croatian coast. Scenario number two, uh, it says Istria, but this is in fact scenario to increase mesh size uh, in uh, travel nets in all of the Croatia, Croatian side of the Adriatic, 
Uh, then scenario number three that says here, <laughs> number one, market region. Uh, this is uh, the scenario to extend the fishing prohibition within six nautical miles until December. And the fourth scenario was to uh, implement fishing prohibition within nine nautical miles, uh, also extended to December. And the fifth scenario was status quo to change nothing uh, compared to current situation. So these are some of the results that came from our model. Um, if you look at the fishing mortality, here is uh, so the, scenari the scenarios number one and two. If we compare uh, what would happen if uh, mesh size was increased only in the northern part of the Croatian coast, and if it was increased in all of uh, the Croatia, uh, what you cannot see, so the red line would be scenario number one, and it is in fact the same as the status quo. So if we do the change only in this small part of the Adriatic, it wouldn't uh, so much change the fishing mortality of this species. But if we do it uh, in a larger scale, then it would uh, lower the fishing mor mortality. Uh, this graph shows uh, the increase of mean length uh, of landing of soil. So then uh, again, uh, if we do the change only in a part of the Adriatic, uh, there is no difference to the status quo. But if we do it uh, in the whole uh, side of Croatia, then uh, there is a visible increase in mean length of uh, soil uh, in the landings of tremble nets. Uh, then the next scenario, uh, next two scenarios are about uh, market region and uh, trawlers. So if we uh, show here uh, a prohibition within six nautical miles and within nine nautical miles, and again, uh, the green line is showing that the biggest decrease in fishing mortality would be, of course, if we uh, extend it to nine nautical miles, that is a uh, larger spatial scale. And uh, it would also uh, increase the mean length uh, of landing of soil. This makes complete sense. But what is interesting is if we try to combine all the scenarios and uh, uh, show uh, the change of landings for all the fleets, then what happens is a compensation effect among the fleets. So um, this is interesting and uh, uh, I can conclude that this is clear that our decision support tool that is created by the Fair Sea project can be used to provide uh, insight and compare impact from different segments of fisheries and also to compare impact of different management measures and different spatial scales. Uh, this tool can also show us links between fishery segments which is very important because it can show that uh, one management measure applied to one segment can have an effect on another segment that is not even included in our management measures. So uh, uh, these pilot actions have shown us and most importantly the stakeholders uh, the importance of uh, such numerical models uh, in management actions. So thank you very much. and. If you have some questions, I will do my best to answer, but also Simone and Maria are here to, to answer questions. Uh, I, I'm Simone again. <laughs> uh, thank you, Daniela, very much for summarizing the, uh, the, the work of uh, actually a very uh, well, I would say interdisciplinary team, because there was uh, there were first several partners working on this. Uh, my first comment is of the fact that, that what we intended in the pilot with the pilot actions, because uh, some of the people might have thought that pilot is something that we implement. In reality, is we implement in terms of scenarios that are coming from the bottom. This is the idea. And uh, and this is actually something that we uh, need to be to stress. 
so not to worry too much the people about the fact that uh, these are pilot action implemented. These are ideas of uh, yes, ideas. that we can talk, talk uh, locally. Then the second message, I think it is, um, you said uh, several conclusions that are very important. Uh, one thing that I would add is uh, the results are also telling that in many cases, local actions need to be evaluated because might be uh, not really efficient or uh, have efficacy if they don't account also what is happening around. Yes. This is also connecting very well with the discussion we had yesterday on the need of uh, who is considering and taking care of the fisheries to uh, aggregate communities of fishermen together. Because really, if there is any choice to be made, it's, uh, it needs to be common if we want to have an effect. And the example of Istria, uh, Istria region idea, it was very peculiar because uh, uh, it was uh, from the bottom as the others. And it was showing clearly that a very sustainable practice will be, used, will be of little eff effect if we're not considered in a larger space. And that yes, exactly. I don't know. Well, I can, yeah. Thank you. Thank you anyway. It was a great work. Thank you. I don't know if there are other questions. But. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Simone and Daniela. I, I have no question. I am Maria Teresa Spedicato speaking. Sorry. Uh, just I would like to, to make uh, a comment, but first uh, that uh, practically is directed to Daniela because uh, I would congratulate uh, with her for the very nice presentation and uh, how she was, you Daniela were so, uh, let's say, effective in putting together all this information in a short slot of time uh, with a lot of many things that are relevant for uh, for the project thank you very much thank you imate li još pitanja nema daniela samo su pohvale ovdje bile i to pogotovo od marije tereze i naših simonea hvala najljepše i nastavit ćemo pratiti rad našeg ministarstva poljoprivrede vezano za cijelu priču oko ribarstva hvala danieli mioković a kako je s nama već gospođa marija tereza spedikato ovdje online mi čekamo i njenu prezentaciju vezanu za scenarij upravljanja bemtulom gospođa marija tereza izvolite Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you go. Okay. So I understand that I have the control of uh, of the mouse. Uh, Maria, yes, just is, press is your mouse correct? on the screen once, please, and you should have control. Okay. So um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Maria Teresa Spedicato. I am um, from COISPA, one of the partners of Fair Sea. And uh, I will go through this presentation on the bioeconomic evaluation of alternative management scenarios using BAM tool, the bioeconomic model that is implemented in the BioEco platform. This is practically uh, the part of the result uh, of the presentation that Isabella gave this morning, she um, illustrated all the parts related to the end casting uh, uh, of the model. And I will show you uh, some of the main uh, output and results uh, from the model. Uh, but first of all, um, I, I, I would like to, oops, how can, Too much. Okay, I, I would like to, to give some element uh, that are relevant for scenarios setting and forecast using BAM tool. Uh, first of all, we took into account the nature of the Adriatic Ionian mixed fisheries uh, with interactions among fleets and target stock. This is very much important uh, because um, as it was also uh, let's say highlighted in the pilot action, what happens when we make some changes in, for example, uh, the, 
management of some fleets. This is uh, in such a way also, uh, let's say, uh, as also consequence for other fleets. So this is very much important to, to take this into account. Then, uh, of course, we took, I, uh, we took into account the recommendation of GFCM number 43, 2019.5, uh, and of course, the management targets. Uh, then uh, we took into consideration then efforts toward improvement uh, of the exploitation pattern uh, is a mean to mitigate also uh, two restrictive measures that otherwise could come up. And uh, then uh, there is also the concept behind the implementation of these, these scenarios that it, it is worth to try to mitigate uh, when designing scenarios, so the possible consequence on species uh, under utilization, because um, under scenario of fishing effort reduction, we have to consider that some species are close, for example, to sustainable exploitation, while other species are not. You can see from this COBE plot that is representing how, for example, common sole or Norway lobster uh, are close to the sustain sustainable exploitation, while uh, red mullet, uh, let's say European ache and uh, uh, deep water rose shrimps are not. So if we manage the fishing effort, reducing the level uh, compatible for a sustainable exploitation of the most exploited species, the risk of underutilization of the other species is very high. And then, of course, we took into account uh, the inputs received during the previous stakeholder meeting as regard the setting of a weighted reference point. Um, most of us are aware that uh, generally in the management, uh, and especially when uh, management measures are uh, designed and are put into the regulation, uh, what is taken into account is the level of exploitation of the stock or the species that, uh, are, uh, let's say, is more overexploited and has also the risk to be more overexploited. So with the, the low level of uh, uh, maximum of uh, FMSY. And uh, in, in this case study, indeed, we tried uh, an alternative uh, approach. And then, um, also, we took into account the that the risk uh, of li limiting the activity of a certain level uh, might cause unrecoverable loss for the fishery in the medium term. So we uh, took all, all these elements into account in designing the scenarios. Oops. Okay, then uh, as uh, it, it was explained even in the past days and several other, other presentation, uh, the, the fishery in, in the Adriatic Union region is characterized by several interactions. Uh, these interactions uh, are especially evident in the Adriatic mi mixed fisheries uh, between uh, trawlers uh, uh, at both uh, wider spatial scale and local sp spatial scale, and between trawlers and small scale fishery at more local spatial scale. Then another aspect that should be taken into account it is, is the so-called dependency of the fishery from the assessed stocks, because this is a, 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 very, a very important point. Um, we have to consider that, of course, the fishery is not made only by the assessed stock, but there are other stock that, of course, uh, make the fisheries. And so it is important to understand if we, uh, let's say, target with the management the, the stocks that are the assessed ones, uh, which is the amount of landing and revenues that we are touching uh, of, uh, of the fleet. And uh, we can see that in, uh, in, in this situation, there, this uh, um, dependency analysis evidences that, that the assessed stock are not negligible in the produ production and uh, economy of uh, many fleets. Uh, you can see in green those 
uh, fleets for which uh, total revenues uh, or, or total lending are higher than 30%. I put this arbitrary level of 30% because it is considered, let's say, quite close to one third of the production of a fleet segment or of the revenues of a fleet segment. So this is something that we have to consider, to take into account. Then uh, when we have implemented the, the, um, the BAM2 model, we took, of, of course, uh, into consideration assumption on socioeconomic functions by, by fleet uh, for the forecast. And uh, these are that the total lending and total revenues are proportional to the lending of a set stock. This is quite, let's say, straightforward and, uh, let's say, is an easy approach. Uh, there are other more maybe uh, uh, complex, but in any case, considering that the assessed species are not a negligible amount, this can be uh, also valid in this case. Then the price dynamic is modeled as a function of the variation of lending through an elasticity coefficient. Uh, variable costs are simulated as a function uh, of the fishing activity at annual level. Fixed or not variable costs are based on capacity as well as the capital cost. And labor costs are modeled according to the Q uh, share system. Then, uh, going to the recommendation of GFCM. Uh, we took into account the transition phase. The transition phase in our model is uh, the, uh, in the year 2020-2021, because until 2019, the model is fed using, uh, let's say, real data and using uh, uh, the perception on the state of the stocks that is coming from the assessment. So practically, practically, what has happened until that date as regard, for example, changes in exploitation pattern or changes in the fleet behavior or changes in many other things, uh, or even what has happened uh, in terms of uh, management measure already implemented, let's say the fishing ban, seasonal fishing ban, is already incorporated into the model. Then we consider the transition phase 2020-2021, in which we have not this kind of data, this kind of perception of the stock, but we applied in this transition phase what it is uh, foreseen in the GFCM recommendation. At, and this means at least 12% reduction for trawlers and 16% reduction of TBB that are beam trawlers. This is something that has already been applied. So it's not, uh, let's say, something on which we have to, to decide also the uh, elements of our management scenarios. Then uh, the GFCM recommendation uh, also um, take into account a five-year fishing effort regime. And this is established uh, from 2022 to 2026. Uh, under this uh, uh, fishing effort regime, GFCM will establish yearly effort quotas and uh, uh, will take into account the target of FMSY and safe biological limits, that's, that means safe biomass for the stock. I already explained the transition phase. Um, of course, uh, this provision regarding the, this effort, uh, fishing effort regime does not apply, uh, did not, uh, do not apply, sorry, uh, to the fleets uh, that have less than 1,000 days. Uh, and also uh, the, the recommendation um, take into account the possibility of, al of alternative measure considering, for example, the closure of the coastal zone within six nautical mile, uh, or alternatively, third continuous days of fishing ban, plus existing fishing restricted areas and new restricted areas. Then the effort allocation formula is a formula that, uh, you know, try to apportioning the um, let, let's say the reduction for a, a given uh, a fleet, considering also the weight of this fleet and uh, in terms of, of effort uh, and, and try to balance uh, this reduction among fleets. 
So what we did uh, was to estimate a combined uh, F target, fishing mortality target. So uh, we can we call this uh, FMSY combined. Um, we should consider that the um, fishing mortality combined currently is 0 0.64, and this M MSY combined is 0 0.35. Uh, the the situation instead of let's say the more uh, endangered stock would be with the an FMSY around the 0 0.2. So uh, this is because, as I explained at the beginning, there was the need of mitigating uh, the impact of such a measure. So uh, especially because uh, we would like to avoid uh, the possibility of uh, underutilization of certain stock when applied management measure to the uh, to the target to the target stocks then uh, uh we which were our simulation uh, of management scenarios about the transition phase uh, i uh, already explained so no variation compared to uh, 2021 were implemented in the status quo scenarios. This means uh, that uh, um, all what has happened is incorporated in the transition phase. phase. Uh, then there is, uh, uh, and, and so the status quo uh, is related to 2021 on 2022, sorry, onward. Uh, then there is this uh, S1 uh, scen scenarios uh, that is uh, as in the effort regime uh, of the F of GFCM recommendation uh, is uh, a linear reduction of 40 percent of the fishing days until 2026 for trawlers and uh, rapido towards a com an FMSY combined of uh, 0 0.35 and then we also um, estimated the um, maximum economic yield uh, because this is very much important because in, by this way, we, we would like to have an estimation of the optimum uh, again in the status quo projected until 2026. Uh, we would have a, a feedback of this optimum accounting for the whole fishing effort deployed. And we took into account the three reference economic indicators and also the whole uh, um, amount of uh, uh, production and revenues. So in the scenario two uh, is a, that we call a composite scenario uh, implemented, of course, also this one after the transition phase in which we combine it. a process of fleet selectivity that is uh, more based on technical selectivity, for example, using uh, different uh, mesh sides or, for example, other uh, technical improvement of the gears in order to avoid the catch of uh, uh, younger fish. Then we uh, also took into account the special closures within the, uh, the six nautical miles until December. This was done taking also into account the presence of nurseries of the main target species in the same areas. The same in, in the same areas means in, in within the six nautical miles. And then we also uh, took in, into consideration the implementation of two months, the implementation in the scenarios uh, uh, modeled of two months of fishing ban also uh, for other gears. This is uh, not explicitly mentioned in the GFCM recommendation, but was a sort of output that came out uh, during the last GFCM sub-regional committee for the Adriatic Sea. And then uh, all these were combined with a, a linear reduction of 20 25% of fishing day for trawlers and rapid fleet. Uh, in this slide, this, this slide is just to, to show, to, to uh, let's say, to, to give an example of the combination of uh, uh, the uh, fishing footprint obtained by Global Fish Watch, we use it in relative terms, and the combination of this information with the ones 
uh, related to, for example, the nurseries of European ache in, uh, in the Adriatic Sea. And we took into account the presence of nursery, at least of European ache, deep water rose shrimps, and red mullet. So regarding the maximum economic yield, the simulation consider uh, the uh, optimum, taking into account a different step of fishing effort. Uh, for all the fleet in terms of fishing days and three economic indicators, the gross value added, the net profit and the return of investments. Um, this is, is this also take into account the wall production and the wall revenues. Um, the needed reduction in terms of effort in, in uh, fishing days is at the level where the three cars of these three indicators reach the mass maximum in a simulation approach. So in theory, considering all this system, the required reduction would be 20%. This is important to take into account and to consider because, you know, give us an idea on, uh, let's say, which is the... the, the, the the boundaries in, in, among which we uh, have to uh, to work. So coming to the uh, simulation for a cost of management scenario in BAM tool, other than May, here we can here we can see uh, the comparison of uh, the uh, annual days reduced in scenario of the status quo in the scenario one the May the let's say strong reduction of fishing days and in scenario uh, two. Scenario two is in the middle of course between status quo and um, also the uh, more the scenario that is reducing more the fishing days. Uh, I would just uh, to, to um, draw your attention on the fact that the two vertical uh, dotted lines are indicating the transition phase. And it, it can be seen that even in the transition phase, there is already a reduction applied. Then in the other slide, in the other, sorry, graph, there is the small scale fishery that also is reduced under scenarios uh, S2 uh, with an amount of about 12%. And it is also possible to see that in the transition phase, there are no reduction. Then what happened to the fishing mortality with this reduction of fishing days? Uh, if, if we consider the fishing mortality of the European lake, we can see that regarding the, uh, the um, uh, S2 scenario, the um, practically the fishing mortality is going uh, close to the upper level of the FMSY of this species, while in the S2 scenario, it will be a bit tiger. But if we took into consideration a species like the Norway lobster, that is uh, practically in a good condition regarding the sustainability, uh, we see that in case of S1 scenarios, we go down the, the low level of, uh, uh, of FMSY. So, we go below F low, while uh, at least in the S2 scenario, we are in the middle between FMSY and F low. That, this means that the species get less underutilized under S2 scenario. What happens to the spawning stock biomass? The spawning stock biomass would increase for at least these three species uh, that are shown here, but for all one for the all is the same. And the increase, uh, of course, is uh, higher uh, compared to the status quo in, uh, in all the scenarios. And uh, the one related to S1 and S2 are comparable among the two scenarios. Only for uh, Mullus barbatus, we have that scenarios two uh, perform better than scenario one because of the reducing impact on the uh, on these species in the uh, six nautical miles, for example. So the, this is important to take into account, and also it is important to take into account what I, I do not remember. Maybe Francesco Masnadi was commented this morning that even, for example, in the um, let's say uh, transition phase, we have a, a small increase of this. Uh, pattern 
of the, for the different species and also the past comp the, the current level compared to the past seems to be to to improve uh, the the simulation of uh, uh, of regarding the revenue and here we have only few uh, examples but the other ones are more or less close is that uh, uh, regarding the s2 scenario we can have uh, uh, let's say uh, especially for some some fleets and especially if we consider the fleets with some targets we can have in the short term a, a higher reduction, but a recover, a better recovery in the medium term, because these scenarios are projected to 2030. Uh, indeed, the in theory for the for the fleet that remain in into the fishery, uh, the the economic situation could improve. Uh, in the in the medium term because the situation of the stock is in, is improving and and so in theory even considering uh, a, a lower amount of days spent at sea their economic situation could improve and also uh, this is sorry this is this can be seen uh, both regarding the the salary the upper uh, panel but also regarding uh, the ratio between current revenue to break even revenues uh, uh, we uh, uh, anyhow, uh, as you know, the the other face of the coin, we can see that uh, we can expect a reduction, unfortunately, in the employment uh, because uh, uh, it is expected that uh, the possibility of employment will deteriorate uh, in uh, in the medium term. So this is uh, just to give an, a, a, an overview uh, of uh, the lesson we learned from this, uh, these simulations. Uh, that is that regarding the scenario two, the numbers uh, of uh, let's say red rectangles, we use uh, the, this uh, traffic light approach in order to have a quick view of what happens, not globally, but even fleet segment by fleet segment. And we put the green color if the performance uh, was better than uh, more than 10%. We put the, the red color when the performance was lower than 10%. Uh, the gray is for those segments that were not included in, in this uh, simulation of, uh, let's say, fishery restrictions. And we put in yellow the situation in which we have a performance that is in between minus 10% and plus 10% because we consider this as, let's say, a zone of uncertainty. So what we can see that is that globally, the S2 scenarios uh, perform better than the S1. This means that it, it would be not strictly necessary to reduce the fishing day of uh, a very large amount. Uh, in this is, uh, sorry, this is in terms of revenues. Uh, so this means that it would be, um, let's say, not necessary to reduce the fishing effort uh, at a very, very high uh, level, but a combination of measure improving the exploitation pattern combined with a reduction in the medium term of the fishing effort could, uh, could perform better. Uh, these are the pictures that already Pino showed you yesterday that are confirming what we have also seen uh, fleet by fleet. Thank you for your attention. And if there are questions, thank you so much. Veliko hvala Marije Terezi iz Pedikato na ovakoj obuhvatnoj prezentaciji. E sad imamo li pitanja online? Nemamo ništa trenutačno. Simone, your question or, or your comment here? I want just to thank Marija Tereza for the nice work done in the project in general, but also uh, with BEM tool. Because uh, what we really uh, were missing in other parts is the socioeconomic part. The, the here is coming out very, 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 very clearly. Uh, the thing that... Uh, um, is uh, is important to stress is the result in the scenario. Some of the uh, these kind of scenario with changing in effort are really something creating, uh, 
let's say, a lot of problems to the sector because uh, what is foreseen by the map uh, sometimes uh, is, is, uh, is, is an important change in, in, the, in the fishing pressure, right? And in the fishing effort for the future. Uh, you actually, in the scenario one that you simulated, you maintain the effort then constant in the future after 2026, uh, constant to that level. And do you have any way a rebuilding of the biomasses? Am, am I wrong? Is it possible? What I'm thinking is uh, uh, the benefit can also a strong reduction of the effort for a short time. I, is that beneficial or not according to your results? No. Um, uh, the, the, in, indeed, the result, uh, Simone, show that, for example, you have uh, the transition phase. In the transition phase, you have a reduction around, let's say, uh, 10, 15 percent, depending on the fleet. Uh, this is already producing some effect on the spawning stock biomass. But then uh, from 2022 to 2030, we applied the reduction that was in, in scenario one, we applied the reduction that was, let's say, uh, considered in the GFCM recommendation because the GFCM recommendation has a target of reaching the FMSY by 2030. Okay, there is also the possibility of, uh, uh, let's say, revising the measure if the uh, scientific advisory uh, uh, board of, uh, of GFCM see that the stocks are improving and the situation of the stock, Spanish stock biomass is better. But in any, in any case, this is, let's say, the, the basic rule. What we did was to uh, apply this kind of rule with this very strong reduction of 40% uh, of the fishing days that, uh, okay, uh, of course, is, is, is uh, let's say, eff effective in improving the state of the spawning stock biomass, but uh, uh, in, in the short term, especially, uh, would be uh, difficult to, to face for, uh, for the economy of, uh, of the sector, because the rebuilding uh, is expected after uh, between, let's say, 2000. Uh, 26 to 2030. And, uh, uh, and so it, it would require to the sector to resist for years that I don't know how much is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, close to the real possibilities. This is the reason why. And also we have to consider that in this kind of scenarios, you have in the end that, uh, okay, some species can be utilized uh, at the best in, bra in bracket because are utilized uh, considering the uh, FMSY, but other species are underutilized because these, the, these other species like nephrops, for example, or soul are, are not in, uh, in, in so worrying situation. So this is, this is the point. And so we tried to mitigate this strategy in the scenarios two, in which we would we attempted to improve the exploitation pattern. That means to improve the selectivity of the fleet, avoiding the catch of the juveniles, because this is the, the big problem. We can also keep a reasonable eye fishing mortality if we do not catch juveniles. So this is the very big problem. And that, that make our fisheries considered so unsustainable. So mixing this with a reduction of the effort because the reduction of the effort is considered uh, necessary because you know, effort are not just fishing days. Effort is also uh, efficiency of the fleet, is fishing power, is catchability. And catchability, Isabella showed this morning, catchability might have increased along the time even keeping, keeping the same number of fishing days. So the, the system is quite complex and we have to consider all these uh, kind of strategy when we design management measure. Thank you for the comment, it's really important. Yeah, I, I agree with what you are saying that uh, probably, uh, the, well, actually was coming out also yesterday when we were discussing with stakeholders that eventual rebuilding of uh, any strong measure will take so long 
that in the main time there will be no possibility for the for the fishing uh, sector to 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 su survive in some sense okay uh, uh, thank you very much thank you thank you for the contribution to the project thanks simona Hvala još jednom gospođi Marije Terezi Spedicato, a sada ćemo čuti scenarij upravljanja sa Ecospace-om, tu je s nama Natalija Serpeti iz OGS-a. Izvolite. Hello everyone, thank you for the introduction. So I joined the OGS nine months ago when we work intensively on developing this model and the Ecospace. Um, it's a very... As you can see in these days, it's a very coordinated work from uh, a team that work together or, uh, in an art way. Uh, you saw these pictures already before. That's the food web we developed on the EcoPath model. So I'm not going to go into details in there. And uh, the model of 73 functional group. Uh, the structures is the same for GSA 17, 18, and the 19, because we want to compare the energy fluxes across the two domains to compare them. Uh, there are species and they are divided in uh, age classes for ache, red mullet, Norway lobster, anchovy, sardines, mountain shrimp, common sole, deep water rose shrimp. The species is a food web model, so they are interacting with each other, eating each other. So the dynamics of these systems, of this tool, uh, it's not only about the fisheries, but also about how the predation pressure change across these groups. So the species varies dynamically, spatially and temporally, uh, following the, the, especially following the, uh, the prey density. Uh, they are driven also to, by fishing, so they try to escape from the fisheries, and of course for the environment. Uh, the domain is specially explicit. So the environment are the uh, very important roles in this tool. Uh, we use different uh, um, properties. We look at depth distribution, sea surface temperature, sea bottom temperature, primary productivity, and salinity, an average of salinities. This is because species don't uh, live in the same areas. They choose, they have a niche of the environment they prefer. So they have an optimum temperature, for instance, and they, they tend to distribute in, in a place where they have optimum condition or favorite condition. So the complication on top of this is then this environment, of course, doesn't stay static, but change over time. And our model starts in 2004. In reality, we have four years of spin-off. So uh, that change over time to the end of our simulations. And as uh, for the other groups presented just before us, we looked at how these species change in temporal and spatial distributions up to 2049. So we add a series of layers and then change over time from the environment. We said that, Marco, thank you for the data. And that, see if he moves. Yes, he should show how, uh, that's just a seasonal signature showing how uh, the um, phytoplankton, two groups of phytoplankton, diatoms and dinoflagellates, and bottom temperature and salinity, I think, no, bottom temperature and surface temperature are changing over time. So we have all these layers then coupled and changed the environment where our species live in. Then we have to also spatially distributed somehow the effort of the fishing uh, then occur uh, in this domain. So we have uh, um, many regions, we set up many regions in eco space to uh, um, force the dynamics of the fleets in 2D for the Adriatic. So fleets, fleets are constrained by fishing uh, administrative areas. So we have three miles from the coast, four and six for each of the country, then they have their own domain, domain fishery domain on the, uh, on the system. So we ended up to have over 48 regions and the fleets are moving following the gravity of their resources. So at the sea, they're acting as predator and they follow their prey, exactly like top predator in this food web system. 
So we also uh, allocate the fleets uh, to the, the fisheries, to the main ports for each country. So we identify uh, the countries, then for instance, they're doing trolling, uh, mid-side vessel. And that is because the fleets um, aim to move towards area with high biomasses, but also try to reduce in the sailing costs. So for instance, if they have their resources, they are in two hot spots, they tend to, to go to the one is closer because it's cheaper. So that is at the end of all these uh, um, uh, rules, how the uh, fishing fleets, they are distributed by country and by fleets, uh, and, but also by size. And the colors, they are, not, uh, they are unique for each map. So the red of uh, the poor saying doesn't match the other troll pressures. So that is how they are distributed. And that it's a driver in our ecosystem. Fishing is a driver like the environment, both in the ecosystem, which is the temporal permutation, and in ecospace. So species move as uh, um, towards their preferable habitats. So uh, fa favorite salinity, favorite temperature, favorite depth. And uh, the capacity habitat is calculated respect and, uh, for this environment, so where they would like to go or to stay. But also the species aim to move towards areas where their prey are, so they are following the prey and escape from their predator. And how they are moving, it's also depending on the capability of moving, which is the, what we call dispersal rates, which is uh, 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 the, the, the capacity of a species to move uh, more or less faster. And it's not related necessarily to the, speed, the active swim of a species, but also to their capability for dispersal, also through the uh, juvenile and larval cycles. So following these rules, that is what we have so far of the species distributed, they are not all. For some of them, we are doing a good job. For some of them, we are still have to do a better job. There are many variables to take in consideration. So we need to, to uh, assess and validate uh, these, uh, these maps. Also, unfortunately, uh, Ecospace doesn't have yet a calibration uh, system, so we can we could probably change in the dispersal rates and the vulnerability of the species in space to try to uh, better represent the spatial distribution of the species. So at this at this moment, we can use though uh, data to validate these distributions, external data, of course. So just to recap, what uh, what we've done it to create this eco space model, we have the model is a monthly resolution. The grid is the, Coper the old Copernicus grid. So it's a special grid of approximately six, seven kilometers, one of 16 degrees. Uh, species move uh, because of the dispersal rate uh, and is different from sessile uh, resident and migratory species. And of course they disperse faster. The model is calibrated over data. So, uh, Igor this morning show you how we collect the data, how we balance the ecopath model, so the energy flows within this mass balance modeling approach. And we also calibrate data in time using um, fishery sketches, biomasses from independent trawl surveys, and stock assessment data for uh, 2004 to 2008, 18, sorry. So uh, that helps us to identify uh, the, uh, interact, the strength of the interaction between the predator and the prey. So there are vulnerabilities from their predator, basically. Um, then we use, uh, of course, the effort, as I said before, to highlight then we are, uh, uh, then fishing is a driver of this ecosystem as well as the environment. And we use, when we have data, for, we prefer to use fishing days, but sometimes we have to do other proxy, uh, like fishing capacity for, uh, for other fleets. So we try to use all of these past data to uh, hind casting the past and try to do a better job of representing what happened in the past in order to try to predict the future under different scenarios where we are changing the drivers 
therefore the environment and the fishing and see what happens if that is what scenario we are testing. So uh, as Maria Teresa just said, illustrated this quite well, we tested as well a transition phase where the effort was reduced of 12% for uh, trawlers and 16% for Rapido um, respect to the 2015 effort. Then we use also the same implementation of further uh, uh, reduction of the fishing uh, pressures uh, using uh, um, proportionally reducing the effort between 2022 to 2016. And then we kept it constant from there forward to the end to, to 2049. Then we also look at the impact of uh, some uh, fisheries restricted areas to see how these uh, cumulative uh, single impact uh, have uh, cascade in our food web scenarios. So first of all, we did a uh, um, three mile, three nautical mile from the coast restricted area. Uh, and we tested these um, restricted areas one at a time first to see how the model was uh, responding. So they test the sensitivity of the model to these uh, restrictions. Then we did also the six nautical mile, uh, the Pomo region and the canyon of Bari and the sanctuary on the North Adriatic. So as I said, we test these on one at a time. And these ones were connected into our system uh, in time. So I don't know if you can see if I indicate, probably not. <laughs> the three nautical miles start in 2010 and go forward to the end of our simulations. The fourth and the sixth nautical mile start in 2021. Uh, the uh, restricted area of Pomo, we made the start in 2017. The three sub areas, so Fondale, Fondaletto, and Troll Ban. And then the canyon of Bari in 2021, as well as the sanctuary. And then, of course, we have the environment. Then it starts from the beginning. Of course, so we can't run an ecosystem uh, without the environment. So we have surface temperature, bottom temperature, salinity, and phytoplankton, which is the bottom up energy of the system. So, where the energy come from? Then the run from 2000 to 2049. Also on the map, uh, I illustrate where these areas are located. So these restrictions, uh, fisheries restriction area. Uh, so we did some scenarios. Uh, our status quo business as usual, we actually use no, none of these restricted areas and the effort is kept constant from the end of our calibration time series, so in 2018, and the go forward to 2049. And then we look at anything happening in the other scenarios compared to the baseline. So we're referring our results in relative changings to the baseline. So scenario one, we, uh, the effort was constant, but we had climate change. Uh, variables. The environment is changing, and we use uh, a prediction for Copernicus where salinity and all the environment, temperature, and primary productivity is changing over time. Then we use, uh, uh, the, we test the, the impact of the transition phase, so changing our efforts. And then we test the uh, further reduction of the fishing um, pressures up to 2026, where we also look at uh, what if we put this reduction of the uh, effort in top of, with uh, the fisheries restricted areas. So I try now to uh, show you some of these results and try to give an interpretation with you. It's a very complex system. So when sometimes there is, you are expecting you're putting a, a reduction of the effort, you are expecting that all your resources are going up, but that is not the case in a food web because if your biomass of a top predator goes up, maybe their prey goes down because the predation pressure increase, despite the fact that we reduce the fishing mortalities. So the scenarios of the climate uh, didn't show very significant, higher significant results. And that is because 
we run these future scenarios to 2049. And generally, when we look at impact of climate change, we need a longer time series. So we probably should look also uh, to the end of the centuries. That is because some, uh, the environment have a trade-off effect Then, if we change, cascade through the food very quickly. But it's not the case up to 2049, likely, and I hope they're right. So we have just a small decrease uh, of uh, phytoplankton with dinoflagellates. It's the first two groups here of only 0.2% reduction by the end of the simulations. And this uh, reduction of primary productivity cascade through the uh, bacteria in, in the sediments and also to the zooplankton. These small decreases cascade through the food web, causing an overall decrease of the biomasses for many functional groups. So many of these, they have very small uh, percentage of changes, but they decrease. And we have only a few groups that actually go up, which is uh, the anchovy, the parapeneus, and the mullus. And that is because the overall predator biomass is going down. So the most uh, uh, species that are predated in the system, they are going up. But again, I'm speaking about very small percentages. But that already alight the importance of considering the food web on, on these scenarios. Then we tested the, the scenarios sensitivity of the system to uh, the implementation of POMO. Uh, I'm going to show you that, that it's the biomass at sea. So we have an increase, an overall increase, for instance, of ache uh, with the implementation of POMO. Ache one, so the mid stage, it's, uh, it's the one increase is less, and that is because these species have an eye cannibalism within the group. So probably the uh, increases of the A2 have an impact to A1. And also uh, other predator increases over in the system. So for instance, Lophius and Galeos, they are going up. And that has an effect in the ecosystem on the prey. So we can see then the implementation of these uh, fisheries restricted areas uh, cre create a decrease of nephrops, of mullus, and uh, of uh, um, uh, I lost the word. <laughs> the species, the the, the squilla. Thank you. And that is the predation, the increase of the predation pressure. But what in this system, we can also look at what happened inside the area. So what happened inside the region of Pomo? And then we have the nephros, for instance, and parapeneos, they increase up to 12 times, all in the area because you are not fishing. And then, of course, there is a spillover effect from this, then create the increase or uh, an help on the biomass sea. We did same things. We simulate also the sensitivity of Barry Canyon and similar results. We found, of course, the, uh, the increase before the percentage of increase was up to 4%, for instance, for ache. Here, the area is very small, so we have uh, uh, smaller increases. But again, uh, uh, Lophius and Galeos are going up. As a consequence, their preys are going down. Also, ache is going up but small percentage. And again, we can look at what happened inside the, uh, uh, the Barry Canyon scenarios, uh, areas, and we have uh, an increase up to more than three times of uh, nephrops inside the, the region. Okay, now we tested the transition phase, similar to what uh, uh, our colleagues did before. So we have a decrease of effort uh, between 2020 and 2021. And that, again, creates an increase of biomass of top predators, then cascade through the food web. And we have a decrease for some species, then they are highly predated. Again, here, the, uh, the changing from the effort is quite uh, have an impact higher, of course, and is up to 20% on the graphs. Of course, a changing of biomass C and the changing of the effort determine a, a reduction of the catches from the fleet. 
So you can see on the two graphs below, uh, then there are some reduction of catches and actually over time that reduction stay constant. That means then the biomasses at sea, they're not increasing enough to rebuild, rebuild the, the, the stocks to allow us more catches in the future in this case. Then we did the transition phase plus the uh, further reduction of the effort plus the implementation of the fisheries research areas. And here we have similar results again with increasing or drop rate of the biomasses then cascade through the food web. But we also can see then, for instance, on the catches, we have then the mullets will rebuild. So the biomass at sea will allow a rebuild of the catches of the fisheries. But of course, this is happening by 2049. So that is what Maria Teresa and Simone were discussing earlier. Uh, sometimes with this uh, um, implementation, we can rebuild the stocks, but is uh, in a longer range of, uh, of time. But again, it's the same scenarios to look at different species. Top predator increases, so the most predated species in this ecosystem are anchovy, parapeneos, for instance, some other uh, reptants uh, at sea. And again, the biomass of these groups are going down and the catches are going down and there's no rebuilding. Okay, so what's next? Uh, because I know it's a final conference, but there is always next, especially modeling. So. As I said before, we don't have yet a, a tool to calibrate our ecospace in times. So the only things we can do at the moment is trying to use external data sets to compare uh, our spatial temporal distributions and look in our autocorrelation in time and space to understand if we are doing a good job or a better job, or if our results at the least are comparable with other modeling approaches. So here, just to make your example, I'll show you the uh, the output or aches and nephrops and compare with uh, Diego's maps that he presented earlier this morning. So in some case, we have a good match, although my aches adult are matching his aches juvenile. So <laughs> there is still something to do here. And thank you for your attention. Please ask questions. Hola, Draga Natalia. Ima li pitanja? Online nema, da li ima netko u publici za koje pitanje? Ili ćemo čekati komentar Simone? No. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra, Thank you, I Simone. am online. Hvala Natalije Serpeti na cijela ovoj priči vezano za model Ecospace. Thank you very much. Thank you. E, tete. No, 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 no. <laughs> May I interview? Čujemo se, Roza? Naravno. Thank you very much. Sorry, but we didn't have time to intervene referring to the previous presentation made, made by Maria Teresa Spedicato that we thank you a lot because the, um, she raised up an issue very important and very relevant for the MEDAC too, and not only. So uh, referring to the previous presentation, Take into consideration also some of the main issues raised by the stakeholders in referring the implementation of the management measures aimed in reaching the MSY of all species, causing efficient effort reduction that could definitely stop the fishing tradition of most of them. So looking at the results shown so far, it seems that we could agree that an intermediate, intermediate FMSY in a mixed fishery as the Adriatic one could be a more balanced, a suitable objective according to the three pillars of the CFP. This is a delicate, very delicate issue that also the MEDAC started to tackle in a, um, how do you say, constant, um, consistent way also with the contribution and collaboration of the scientific experts that are uh, co-working.